I'm Salvatore Babonis, and today's lecture is The Syrian Refugee Crisis, European Impacts. Europe received around 1 million asylum seekers in the six months after Angela Merkel's August 2015 declaration of an open door for Syrian refugees. A rich continent of 500 million people was much better positioned to care for these people in need than the Middle Eastern countries that have accommodated even larger flows over the last few years. Nonetheless, Europe has struggled to cope. The unfolding refugee crisis has split European societies, led to the rise of extremist political parties, and threatened the very survival of the European Union itself. Clearly, the European Union should be able to uh, accommodate and assimilate large numbers of refugees. Just to use a comparison between the European Union and the three other largest receiving countries of European refugees, the European Union is more than three times as rich as Turkey, Lebanon, or Jordan, has many times the population uh, compared to Lebanon, uh, 100 times the population of tiny Lebanon, uh, and yet has received fewer refugees than any of Turkey, Lebanon, or Jordan. But Europe is not synonymous with the European Union, and even within the European Union, national interests still prevail. So you can see in this map the countries of the European Union with uh, those countries not included in the Union but still in Europe. Switzerland, Serbia, uh, Macedonia, uh, Albania, Montenegro, uh, and uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina. Uh, these countries uh, are affected by the European Union's uh, position on refugees, particularly the Balkan countries of Macedonia uh, and Serbia, but are not actually part of the European Union. Also within the European Union itself, interests vary dramatically. So Germany, at the heart of the European Union, has announced an open-door policy for refugees, but the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Austria, Hungary, Croatia, and Slovenia, the countries that stand between the refugee receiving countries and Germany have had no say in that. And the country perhaps most impacted of all, uh, Greece, had no say whatsoever in the decision uh, to encourage more refugees to come to Europe. And yet increasingly, Greece is where those refugees uh, must stay uh, if they're not admitted into uh, the other European Union countries. Strangely, Angela Merkel seems to have made her August Open Door Declaration without consulting fellow European Union leaders. Her decision to allow Syrians and, in effect, others uh, to claim asylum in Germany had massive unintended consequences. Yet these consequences were easily foreseen. Uh, in fact, I myself foresaw, foresaw those consequences immediately and uh, quickly published an article predicting that uh, continued accommodation of refugees will yield an exponential growth in migrant numbers, a spiraling crisis that will ultimately break the Schengen Agreement. The Schengen Agreement is the European Union's agreement on the free movement of people within Europe. I said the European Union faces a clear choice open borders without or open borders within. The old liberal dream of both at once cannot survive the harsh reality of our unequal world. Essentially what I argued in this article was that if Europe cannot enforce its external borders, uh, then countries within Europe would start enforcing their own internal borders. And that's exactly what has happened uh, over the last six months. The giant sucking sound of Angela Merkel's declaration uh, was not just heard in Syria, uh, but was heard all across the Middle East with people from uh, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, uh, throughout the Middle East, uh, making their way to Europe, some of them claiming to be Syrian, others simply in the misunderstanding that uh, all uh, refugees would be accepted not only Syrian refugees. 
One major reaction in Europe has been the rise of anti-immigrant, xenophobic, and in some cases uh, transparently racist political parties throughout Europe. Uh, now this list is taken from an article in the Express newspaper in the UK, uh, but the figures are, uh, are, are all included there if you want to uh, click on the link. Uh, in Austria, the Freedom Party, the far-right Freedom Party, doubled its vote in local elections. Uh, in Denmark, the Danish People's Party uh, rose. In Finland, the True Finns Party, as its name would indicate, uh, a, uh, an extreme anti-immigrant party wanting to keep Finland for Finnish people, is now uh, in second place in national elections. The National Front in France, which has always campaigned on an anti-immigrant platform, uh, reached first place in the first round of uh, elections of national local elections in France this year. Uh, in Hungary, the ultranationalist Jobbik party won 21% of the vote, and that's in a context where Hungary's right-wing leader uh, built a fence uh, to defend Hungary against uh, migrants coming from, uh, from Serbia, uh, Syrian migrants making their way to Hungary from Serbia. Uh, even though the leader of Hungary was himself uh, very aggressive in taking on uh, immigrants and not allowing uh, asylum seekers to transit through Hungary, uh, he still lost votes to a party even further on the ultra-nationalist right wing. The Dutch Freedom Party is similarly a uh, ultra-nationalist party in the Netherlands, an anti-immigrant party, is uh, rising in the polls. Uh, the Swedish Democratic Party is the same story. Uh, and in Switzerland, the Swiss People's Party, which for a while had uh, disappeared as a major political force, uh, has come back. And, and again, this is a Switzerland for Swiss people anti-immigrant party. Perhaps most tellingly, in Germany, the Alternative for Deutschland, uh, the Alternative for Germany, doubled its support in opinion polls. Uh, this is Germany's dedicated anti-immigrant party. Uh, it is um, rising in the polls in the very country that declared it would welcome immigrants. In fact, in Germany, crowds of up to 25,000 people have been turning out for anti-immigrant rallies held by Pegida. Uh, a German ultra-nationalist organization and social movement. Here you see uh, their rally in Dresden in eastern Germany uh, with a sign proclaiming uh, Frau Merkel, you know, Ms. Merkel, you know, here are the people. Uh, it's, she, the sign is saying, here are the people talking, saying we don't want uh, refugees in Germany. Anti-immigrant sentiments in Europe have been reinforced both by stereotypes and by the real crimes that inev inevitably follow in the wake of one million people. Um, it's impossible to find a population of one million people who commit no crimes at all. Uh, thus, inevitably, some immigrants commit crimes. Uh, however, this photo that has circulated the internet uh, for the last year purportedly showing uh, Islamic State radicals battling with German police. Uh, this photo in particular is a, a completely uh, made-up uh, story. Uh, this photo actually has been around for several years. It has nothing to do with Islamic State. Uh, it is a photo from a uh, Muslim uh, German counter-protest against a far-right anti-immigrant protest. Um, completely unrelated to Islamic State, and yet throughout Europe and even in America, uh, this photo has been circulating as evidence that refugee flows are bringing with them Islamic State radicals. There has been criminality, uh, especially well reported were attacks and assaults on New Year's Eve uh, of women being uh, harassed and sexually assaulted by people who they believed to be Middle Eastern refugees and presumably were, uh, at least many of them, refugees uh, coming in as part of the uh, recent uh, migration flow. Uh, the biggest attacks were in Cologne, Germany, where 16 women reported being molested. Uh, eight. Uh, refugees have been charged in that crime. Uh, in Sweden, Kolmar, Sweden, uh, another uh, 
incidents with multiple women being molested. Uh, similar incidents reported in Salzburg, Zurich, and Helsinki. The common theme here has been young, isolated men who don't speak the local language, who don't have families uh, to temper their emotions or give them any guidance, and who've not been socialized into European gender norms, uh, who've not been taught to accept that uh, you know, women uh, can wear bare legs, uh, you know, in a short skirt, and that that does not mean it is a uh, license to sexually assault them. Unfortunately, uh, these kind of problems are common, uh, but these kinds of problems are not as common as people think. Uh, when we add up the number of assaults that occurred on New Year's Eve all across Europe, uh, reports are of something like 30 or 40, maybe even 50 assaults. Uh, well, 50 assaults in a population of 1 million migrants uh, on a major drinking holiday really is not a large number statistically, uh, even if it grabs the attention of the press and the public. Of course, everything changed with the terrorist attacks in Paris and Brussels in November and in March. Uh, these seriously hardened European public opinion against any immigrants from the Middle East, uh, including refugees, uh, and especially immigrants and refugees if they were from Syria. The Paris attacks in particular uh, were uh, conducted by people who had entered Europe alongside this flow of irreg irregular uh, immigration, the asylum seekers coming to Europe. Now the blame for these attacks is not the asylum seekers. These were not asylum seekers who committed the attacks. In fact, the people who have been identified as attackers both in Paris and in Brussels uh, were either citizens or people who had permission to live in France and Belgium. Uh, they had come in, uh, snuck into these countries alongside asylum seekers because of the lack of border enforcement. Uh, the lesson here seems to be that asylum seekers should be admitted through regular channels uh, where they can be identified uh, as opposed to uh, simply uh, having people cross over the border in mass irregular waves uh, without any, uh, any security or any checks. It is in this unfortunate climate that the United Kingdom will vote on June 23rd whether or not to leave the European Union, uh, a vote that has come to be known as Brexit for British exit from the European Union. Right now, as of uh, early April, the polls are still very even on whether uh, the British people will vote to stay in the European Union or leave, but this French cartoon really captures the mood, which is that uh, British people are sitting in their home sweet home on the cliffs of Dover with a sign saying no migrants and uh, speaking to each other. Uh, you know, I don't think uh, uh, we really should want to go over there, meaning to Europe. Uh, and, uh, you know, no, uh, no, of course not. You know, why would we? Uh, the image of Europe from the UK is one of uh, refugees in tents in Calais. Uh, this image is not one that uh, perhaps encourages British people to want to stay in the European Union. Key takeaways. The European Union's inability to enforce its external borders has resulted in the return of internal borders within the European Union itself. Second, ultranationalist, anti-immigrant political parties and social movements are on the rise in European countries, partly in reaction to the massive wave of refugee flows into Europe. And third, terrorist attacks in Paris and Brussels have inevitably been conflated with the refugee issue, uh, despite the fact that they were not committed by actual refugees. Thank you for watching this podcast. You can find out more about me at Salvatore bonus.com where you can also sign up for my monthly newsletter.